Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining us on another interview. Now, hopefully by now, you've seen some of these on Sundays. Sometimes I have to release them at different times, but make sure you set your calendar, join us every Sunday. If we miss a Sunday, that means that we're going into the new season or something happened in the media and I had to do a special video. Today, our special guest. Now, I see Simply Unique Coaching is the name of your company, yes. but how, how do I pronounce your name? It's Barika, and actually, I guess I can change that really quickly. Uh, but yeah, I'm Barika from Simply Unique Coaching. Okay, and that is a first. I've never heard that name, so I, I really got to get the the origin of it, you know, like where does it come from? Like who named you? So long story short, um, and I didn't realize this until I was an adult. My dad was a, a Trekkie and he liked uh, the name of Lieutenant Uhura. So he was trying to figure out how to get her name into my name. So my middle name is Uhura, um, but it's Swahili. So Barika Uhura um, Andrews and um, it's Swahili. My first name means blessing and success. And my middle name means freedom. Wow. Now that word you said, did you say tricky? Uh, yeah. Uh, Star Trek. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that, <laughs> cause I, I've never heard of that. So that's, so Star Trek, if you love it, you call the Trekkie. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That is amazing. So you just unique all the way around. <laughs> that is something. And, and then you name your company simply unique coaching. Absolutely. That is, that is amazing. So tell me, how did you bump into me online? I think it probably was. OK, so I used to live in Abu Dhabi. That's another story. I was living there for about four years. And um, you know how like God tells you what you're supposed to do and what you ain't supposed to do. And so I, he did not allow me to date for about a 15 year period. And there was a time or two I tried to like test the waters. And I think it was one of those times when I tried to test the waters and bump my head. And so God sent you and another uh individual my way with the videos and stuff like that and so that's how I came across your content and also I had the book that you and your wife read I mean wrote together and so um yeah that's how I came across your information and content that's amazing and now so now do you reside in the U.S. or where, where are you now so right now I am in the Dominican Republic really so <laughs> is does your family have ties there or you just wanted to live there that's where God sent me. That, that's where, yeah. So, so finally, when God said yes, he said yes. And my husband is Dominican. So I'm here now with my husband. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now you and your husband, did y'all meet there or y'all met online or in, in the States? We met here. We met here. And so we've been together since 19, well, no, not 19, 2019. And then we've been married since 2020. Wow. So y'all met there. Now, were you already living there or you were just vacationing or what? Vacationing, but God, I got a listening ear. So he told me to keep my eyes open. So I did that. And and I, when I met him, I was like, okay, this must be who God was telling me about. So, <laughs> Wow. Now that is amazing. Cause now that's a whole nother interview that we're going to have to talk about because <laughs> now we've been, we're going to have a lot of women traveling out the country <laughs> you know, with their eyes open, just in, just in case, because you never know. So it definitely, having a listening ear to God, it pays off. It sure does. It and, certainly does. <laughs> and so you are living testament to that. Now, tell me about Simply Unique Coaching and what thrust you into the space of coaching and just where do your passions lie and what you're working on? Okay. So the, I'll try to give the shorter version of the story, but basically God allowed me to have my first paid leadership position at the age of 17 in 1997. And like, literally, I like to say I'm a natural born leader because I have had, I've led over 17, no, 18 teams. And I have never applied for any of these positions. Like most of the time I was recruited and asked for, and only when I went into education, because you're leading students in the classroom, that's the only time I really applied for a job. But every other time I've been headhunting, every other time. And so I've led more than 15 teams and I've led, like I said, over 18 years. And in that, 
um, during the pandemic when I was stuck, oops, sorry, I shouldn't say stuck in Abu Dhabi, <laughs> but when I was in Abu Dhabi, which is definitely a kingdom. So you have to follow the rules of the Sheikh and the Sheikh was like, we're not playing, you know, y'all going to be quarantining if you leave. So you're going to be on, a, you, so I wasn't able to travel back home during that time because I would have had to quarantine for like two two different occasions. And that would have been like four weeks of quarantine. So I was like, okay, no, I'm going to stay. So during that time I was just doing research and um, the Lord brought me across a couple of different things, but one was your um, life coaching Academy as well in course. And then he just gave me the download for simply unique coaching and why it's called simply unique coaching is because I feel like leadership is something simple and having that education side, I know that it does not have to be difficult. It can be very, very, very simple. And I like to make things practical. And then I also know from working with people and I'm, I've literally worked with people all the way from age four to retirement age. So I have seen the whole gambit and I see what is basically on the inside of people and what they need to develop over time in order to be successful. And so when it comes to unique, everyone is an individual and trying to treat people like they're the same is going to cause problems for anybody. If you are in any type of leadership position, if you have any influence over any group. So the more that you understand that everyone is an individual, the more successful you're going to be as a leader. Mm. Now, tell me again, what were you doing in Abu Dhabi? So when I was working there, I went as a teacher. So I was teaching in elementary school over there. I worked in a government school for the first year and then in a private school for the last three years I was there. Wow. I wanted to go there recently. I think it was July for Team USA basketball was playing there. And I've never been. And that is amazing. Now, you are a leader. and yes. but But one quality of leaders mm -hmm. in my opinion is like confidence another like audacity you know mm -hmm. courage and mm -hmm. of course you're overcoming things to tap into that but for you to go to Abu Dhabi to teach and then to also go to the Dominican Republic and to meet your husband and now to live in the Dominican Republic. Now, where were you raised? In Florida. So wow. South Florida originally, then North Florida thereafter, and then overseas after that. <laughs> and that is something because you would never imagine that somebody can come from Florida because because I'm a Florida boy and then live all over the world. That's amazing. Now, with Simply Unique Coaching, mm -hmm. what is like your ideal client? Okay, good question. So I focus on helping people who are new to leadership because I want them to avoid the pitfalls that leaders can run into. And what I end up finding is that sometimes people get thrown into these positions, like the second leadership position I had, they were like, okay, you're good at being an analyst. Why don't you take over this team, this brand spanking new team that has never existed before, build it from scratch. And it's a part of our scorecard for our company. So if you screw up, everybody in the company is going to know all 10,000 employees are going to know you know, kind of thing. And so, um, so I don't want people to be in that kind of position. And thankfully in that company, they did support me. So when I say they poured thousands of dollars into my leadership training, they poured thousands of dollars into that. So I'm trying to say people who maybe have a small business or maybe working for a company that just won't invest that type of money into them. I'm trying to teach them what I've learned naturally plus what I have been taught also when I was in those courses and professional development and all those things. And with me leading so many teams, there are certain things that has to be in place for any team. It doesn't matter who's on it, what type of culture, the age, whatever. There are certain things that are consistent that have to be in place. Mm. Now with leadership, do you, have you written a book yet or are you planning to? Mm -hmm. I got two under the works. One is going to be on leadership. And then one is kind of on a topic of how I survived the wilderness. And it's like talking about going through a tough season of life and how I came out on the other side. So that one's actually like written. I just got to edit it and do stuff. But the other one is um, on a leadership topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now typically when we hear the word leader, mm -hmm. I, me personally, when I hear the word leader, I mm -hmm. think of this big bold person in front of the crowd just mm -hmm. confident extrovert all of that what are some 
misconceptions of the word leader and how can a person be a leader in other areas of life outside of just the typical idea of standing in front of a room or in front of an audience or being big online? Like, do these teachings, these qualities, can they be applied to other areas of life, like being a, a mom or a dad or Absolutely. Um, and actually, the way that I define leadership is having influence. I feel like if you have influence, especially over the life of someone, if you're a parent, then it's over your children. But if it's over a group of individuals, anytime you actually have influence with someone, that's leadership. And I feel like it's something that we have to treat as being important because that affects somebody else. And so one of the misconceptions that I actually see with leadership is actually opposite. People think that leadership is being loud and boisterous and I'm the one with the title. You got to respect me. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. You know, because a true leader and I saw one of your interviews where you'll remember it, where there was some people, I guess, that um, has said some things or whatever. And you went on. And one of the things that I noticed about you early on when I watched your content is that you're very authentic. You're very authentic and you're very real. So I picked up on your leadership right away because the leaders can recognize leaders. And so when they got all loud and boisterous, I said, that's the that's a beta right there. Alphas don't need to do, they don't do any of that stuff. I actually have a, a video on my channel that's like alpha versus beta because it's very different from what people think it is. And so for me, when I'm correcting an employee, the same tone that you hear me do, using right now, that's the same tone that I use. I don't have to yell. I absolutely should not ever yell. If I'm yelling, it should be like emergency, like watch out, like, mm -mm. and so, and unfortunately what I've seen throughout my career in interacting with different people, I hate to kind of say it with women, women, I love y'all. And you know, I'm a woman too. I'm going to say it though, but sometimes um, women can get these positions of leadership and they think about the power. They don't think about the responsibility. Leadership carries responsibility with it. And so if you are seeking a position and it's just so you can say, oh, well, I'm the queen of the castle. I'm the queen of the school. I'm the queen of the corporate office. I'm the queen. Of... That's, that's, you have the wrong heart. You got to fix your heart because you have responsibility towards people. And, and your job should be to help a, your organization or your family or whatever you're leading, get to where it's supposed to go and to do it in a way that people still like you, <clears throat> excuse me, they still like you <laughs> as they go through the process, you know? Um, and we're going to make mistakes, of course, but also being able to own those mistakes. People respect you more when you can own your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have children? I have a stepdaughter, but I I have raised children. I have like raised a couple of family members and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the reason why I ask is because I know sometimes when we're raising kids, we don't draw the parallel between raising a child and being like a supervisor at work. And a lot of times when you raising a child, we can get beside ourselves and be toxic, terrible leaders and then, but as I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? If a boss at work, if a manager, supervisor, whoever at work, talk to the employee the way we as parents have talked to our children, there would be no employees. Like Thanks. everybody would be gone. The company would be sued. And so that's where I'm also exploring this topic of leadership with you because I also want people to understand that just because they're not a CEO or a manager or supervisor at work, it doesn't mean they can't go through leadership coaching to learn how to be a leader for their siblings, their children, in their household, on their job, even if they're at the lowest level at their job. Now, do you think or have you thought about that, about how like the leadership tools that you've picked up in corporate, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a child, do you have you utilized those tools or did you find yourself at sometimes like forgetting them and taking a different route? So let me tell you what's unique about my situation is that. I wanted to be a teacher when I was growing up and in fifth grade, I was in the future teachers of America, had my little t-shirt, was handing out stickers to the kids. And then this fifth, uh, no, this five-year-old cussed me out. And I was like, listen, I'm old school. I can't whoop him. So let me give you all y'all t-shirt back. I'm going to corporate America. <laughs> so as a 10-year-old, 
<laughs> that is what I decided. And so I had like I wanted originally to be a teacher, but I went into corporate. So I worked with adults first. And then God was like, thank you, Barry, go back into teaching. I put that in your heart. So then I taught for 10 years. And so he had me go reverse. But in between that, I also was in a youth ministry for the church. So I was like a supervisor for the youth ministry for about seven years in between that. So like I said, I've worked with every gambit. And so I saw in kind of working in that way, like, okay, when I started working with the children, if this child, yes, they're eight, they're nine, whatever, if they don't get out of this in the next couple of years, they're going to be like that when they are working on the team on the with the boss I've, I've managed 35 year old this this person <laughs> and so as a teacher I would still approach them like that you know even with my boys I would say hey listen you know they were like oh I don't want to do my work I said listen there's sometimes I don't want to do my work either but guess what one day you're going to have a family and you're going to have to go do what you need to do because if you don't you're going to get fired and you're going to lose money and, you, and you're not going to be able to feed your family so you need to do your work even if you don't feel like it you know, mm. and I would talk to them like that because I'm trying to instill into them what they need, what I know they need to be successful when they get older. And so I did treat my my students like that. And I use respect with them. You know, I would say, yes, uh, sometimes I would use like, ma'am, like, no, ma'am, we don't do that here. Yeah, or sir or whatnot, because I feel like when you give respect, you get respect back. Mm. Yes, you are right about that. Now, I have a Interesting question for you that just hit me be just because of the state that we're in right now in mm -hmm. the world and being that everyday people like us, we're, we're looking at the media. Mm -hmm. So not saying in no way does this mean which way you would vote, but okay. based on the leadership principles that you have learned mm -hmm. and based on the small glimpses that we get to see mm -hmm. of Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, mm -hmm. which one, if you have, have you heard both of them speak? Um, I at a podium? bits and pieces. Um, but I used to watch The Apprentice because I was a business major. So I used to like that. So I used to watch that show before he got into the whole political stuff. And, and I used to watch him speak. Of that. Yeah, I've heard him speak. What about Kamala? I haven't heard her speak too much. I've heard like sound bites, but not mm -hmm. like a full, you know, 10, 20 minutes. Same here. Yeah. And so it's, it's a little hard to judge, but mm -hmm. what I want to ask you is like, which one of them is mm -hmm. showcasing the most leadership, healthy leadership mm -hmm. qualities? So here's what I'll say. I feel like um, both of them, and I'll just say this, and I typically don't share this kind of stuff, but I actually don't have a dog in the pony, you know, I mean, like a, what, what a dog in the fight. Dog in the show. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I will exercise my vote and, and whatnot, but for me, um, you know, it is what it is and we got what we got. Right. Um, so I will, I'm trying to see if the Lord will let me say it. I think he's about to tell me, I can't say that. Okay. <laughs> so I will say, um, what I do look for in leadership is that leaders need to be able to make tough decisions. And even if people don't feel good, even if they get backlash, and that's actually another attribute of the leaders, they're going to do what's right for the group, even if the group don't like it. Like your your kid might say, I don't want to go to bed tonight. Da, 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 da. And you're like, no, you need to go to bed because tomorrow we need to get up. And they might huff and puff, but then the, the next morning they're going to be happy and bright eyed and bushy tailed. But had they stayed up late, they would be whining and and all that kind of stuff. And so a, a leader is going to do what's right, regardless of the pushback that they get. And when they do it the right way, their team will begin to trust them and say, you know what, even though I might not understand it, I trust them. And so um, I'll say with one of the candidates, I don't see strong leadership there. One of them, I see leadership skills there, you know, need to be fine tuned and some things there. The other one, I don't, when I look at but I see, I don't see leadership there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't pick, like I was saying, like on your interview, I could, I could clearly pick up that you were alpha and the other individuals were not, you know, because, um, because also leaders have a certain tone. It's, I don't know how to say it, but it's a certain tone that comes across, even if like they may meet somebody that they don't know, but, and they can walk into a room and they can say something and somebody say, oh, that's a leader without them saying like, this is my position, this is my business card, this is the company. Like, there's a certain way that they carry themselves that it comes across very clearly. And people can understand that and respect that. Mm. And that's amazing. And I think that these are things that we all need to learn. And you answered that question perfectly. And okay. I ain't want to get you in no trouble because I know how it is because 
And so to anybody watching, this is not about politics and don't make me block you in the comments getting into it about politics. But I ask that because we we look at the people at the highest level and mm -hmm. we're evaluating and we're trying to see. And so when I look at it, I could see to where I heard someone say, like, if a woman mm -hmm. feels inferior, mm -hmm. like if she feels less than a man mm -hmm. and like she's been in a dog fight to compete with a man or play a man's game that if she gets into a position of power like the president she could be prone to overreacting or trying to do too much to overcompensate for feeling inadequate and and that's the hope that the hope is that she doesn't feel inadequate but i say that to say that translates in my mind to every area of life so as you're talking I'm thinking about parenting and also being a husband, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that. And, and as you're talking, I could picture my wife because sometimes she has these rules that's hard and fast, like, Hey, you know, go take a shower and you got to shower every night. And cause as, as a man, we'll be okay. Skipping a night here or there, <laughs> but she make my sons, they got a certain routine and she sticks to it no matter how, much they hate it and even me i kind of want to go light sometimes but then it pays off and so as you were saying that that's what was playing in my head of like a leader makes the tough decisions even if the team doesn't understand it because they benefit in the end so now with this who would be like the clients that you work with do you work with men women is there certain age groups so for me, I will work with anybody who is willing to learn and is teachable. You got to be teachable because, listen, I don't play that. <laughs> I, I'll just be straight up. I don't play that. But I can tend when I see people and when I work with them, I can perceive kind of the potential that they have. And that's one of the good things God has given me to help pull that out of them. But I will only pull it out of you to the extent that you will allow it and that you're going to be flexible because I can see it in you. But if you're not willing to bend and, and open up and, and consider new ways of doing things, then that's different. Now, I will say that for the company, it's kind of like I focus on new leaders. However, I have had leaders that have had 10 years of leadership, 20-something uh, years of leadership that have come to me as well. And so I've also seen leaders who are in the midst of transition. But if you're also interested in learning how to be a leader, that's really what I specialize in because I want you to be able to have a strong foundation. I want you to know all of the fundamental things that you need to know. Like there are certain core personalities that you need to know. First, you need to know your core, your core personality um, because that's going to tell you how you are innately wired and that will never change. And so you need to know the strengths and the weaknesses of yours. You need to know that of your individual team members so that you don't try to treat Sally the same way you treat Johnny. They're two different people. And if you treat them the same way and they have two different personalities, you're going to get a bad result. But when you figure out, okay, I can treat this person like this way. And it's not to say that you're being unfair, but it's like, if I, this is a people person, I know I can't have those quick run bys and be like, okay, I'll see you later. Like that's going to, they're going to be offended. I have to take the time to speak to them and say, how are you doing? How's your day? Now with my direct communicator, I can say, Hey, can you do X, Y, and Z? Okay. I'll see you later. And they're fine. You know, and knowing those different things, the different types of communication, the different core personalities. And uh, so anyway, I help people understand those and it's really emotional intelligence. And in doing that and in knowing how people operate, you can learn how to build a team that likes working together and who loves working for you. Mm. This is invaluable. I'm like, wow, that that is because I thought about when you were saying that, I thought about my barber. He is he said one time I was in the chair. He was like, man, bro, people hit me up and they don't even say, how you doing? Like they don't even say good morning. And I am like that. Like I'm a direct communicator. And so ever since then. Whenever I text him, I go out of my way to do what I don't like doing, which is, hey, bro, what's going on? How you doing? Hope all is well. That's too much for me. I'm more so like, this is what I need. And I have a friend, a business partner. He's direct communicator. He doesn't even say happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Like He doesn't open up with any pleasantries or greetings. 
and me learning how to that who I can talk to what way that mm -hmm. goes back to what you're saying like learning the individual and leaders learn the individual and doesn't try to just apply the same thing to everybody Absolutely. and oh this powerful now hmm have you created any pdf downloads and stuff like that are you in the works on it I have a lot, a lot of things created. So I have a free uh, new leader checklist. So if you want to see if you're headed on the right direction, um, you can go ahead and check that out. And I sent that information over to your team. After that, I have something called eight lessons in leadership. So it's eight lessons. And this is a PDF. I think it's like 22 pages and it has uh, reflection questions and all these things. Because again, I was a teacher. So I want you to be able to apply what I'm teaching. I'm not just giving you information. No, I want to see change in your life. And um Eight Lessons in Leadership. I also have a 90-day boot camp, a leadership boot camp, and that one is self-paced as well, but it has 36 videos on different leadership topics, workbooks, question, employee questionnaires, all those kind of things. I also offer, um, like, if you want a one-off uh, consultation session, I have that. I call them the strategy sessions, and I have coaching sessions as well if someone wants to get a package of those. But um, And also, if with the first couple of products, if someone purchases them, purchases them they can communicate with me inside of a course portal that they're in. So they can at least send me a uh, written messages and I get those and I respond back to them. And I love to get feedback. That's the other thing I'll say. If you're a leader, make sure you're getting feedback because people are always thinking about things. They may or may not share it with you. So it's better for you to ask them and they will tell you what you, they're, what they're thinking. Mm, you are right. You are right. And that's a double-edged sword too. Uh, I saw Steve Jobs quote that said, if you ask people what they want, and I'm going to get your take on this, okay. by the time you deliver it, they will have changed their mind. What are your thoughts on that? Well, he, and I think he was talking more so about technology and like his Apple products. Like he tries to think ahead and innovate and mm -hmm. just create and then deliver it to the audience versus asking the audience, hey, what do y'all want to see from Apple and then mm -hmm. taking the years to create it. And then they're like, hey, oh, we don't want it that anymore. We want this now. And so I think he was more so speaking to that part of it. And mm -hmm. that's something that that's an area that I feel like a lot of quote unquote leaders have to grow in is hearing feedback and, and being able to decipher between w when someone is speaking for your betterment or to enhance you versus speaking from their jaded perspective or their anger or what have you and so it's a lot of nuances to it and so that's something that I also teach on also is as a leader being able to create the community and that environment for giving and receiving feedback because like I said people are already thinking it you know like if you have a friend you know there might be a conversation you never have with your friend but there's something that you think and if they ask you like man do my breath stink? And you're like, yeah, bro. <laughs> you know, since you asked me, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll let you know. You know, there's certain things where people will never speak up if they're not directly asked because they want to be polite. And so for me as a business owner, for me as a leader, I know they're already thinking it. I better know it now because that way I can make a shift. But I also create an environment where my team is able to get feedback and receive feedback as well. So I like to pour in all the positives for the good things, the legit good things that you do. So that that time that I have to come back with a correction, it's not she's picking on me. It's not she's being mean. No, because I put 10 good stones in your bucket first before I had to just pull one out. You know what I mean? And so um, I try to do that. But yeah, I, I think that when it comes to like decision making, you want to get the input. But as the leader, depending on the type of team you have, depending on their experience that they bring to the table, then there are some times when you as a group may need to make a decision or you as a leader just may need to make the decision. Like you can take the input and say, OK, based on that, we're going to go with this. But if you have an experienced team of people who are top notch, a high performing team, then you want to try to bring in as much as their input as possible, because if they're experts in what they do, then why not lean in on them? Mm -hmm. You're right. That's that's powerful. I thank you so much. So what we have for everyone, I believe we have so many amazing people who have amazing gifts and offerings and you have to choose what's for you and when is for you. All of it is for you, but just deciding when, but this leadership coaching, this is definitely for everyone because at some point we have influence in someone else's life. So what I've done 
is in the description box. You will see all of the contact information, all the websites. So you can tap in, get connected and get what's for you. Now, I want to ask you, Marika, is there any last words you have for the people? Any thoughts, anything that we left out? So I will say that part of why I came up with this company as well, like I said, it's a God idea for sure. But I know I've been under bad leaders before, and I know the damage that can occur with being under a bad leader and how they can stress you out. They can cause you unnecessary drama. Like I literally have been in two work environments that were toxic. And I mean, to the point where there was violence that occurred in both of those, not to like, yeah, not, I had to think about it. I was like, did I have any violence? Uh, I probably had a kid throw something at me or whatever, but, um, but it was because of the environment, like it was really, really bad. And so what I can See is like when somebody's missing something and I want you guys to not create those type of environments. And I, and if you're watching Tony's videos and I know that that's not your heart, you have a heart that you want to do the right thing. So if this video isn't for you, then send it to somebody, you know, who may need it because we don't want people going home miserable because they had a bad boss or they had a bad experience. And, um, i worked with for-profit, non-for-profit. I've led teams overseas when I was in Abu Dhabi for two years, I was helping lead, uh, home group while I was there as well. And so I've worked with a bunch of teams. I have a lot of experience. So tap into it. You know, I want you to succeed and I want you to be your best. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was great Thank having you. you. And I know this is a wealth of information. It has me thinking right now about reaching out to the academy director for my son's soccer club because I see some coaches with horrible leadership you know, skills and really need to learn like, Hey, you know, you can't yell at this kid the same way you're yelling at this other kid. Cause that's two different personalities. And so that is amazing. I also want you to take your gift into that space too, reaching out to sports leagues and teams and doing zoom calls with the coaches and things of that nature, because we are leading the future and we're setting the precedent, you know, the standard for those to come after us and so our leadership matters so thank you so much for doing what you're doing and being in this space and i'm wishing you the best thank you so much tony and thank you guys have a great day awesome thank you hey remember every sunday catch an interview this will be going on for about hopefully we'll get through about a year and this is only open to those in the community, Tony Gaston Academy and coaches. So if you're in there and we have some openings come up, stay tuned. We'll see you soon.